wrote a great book about this called Red Famine. And these activists descended on these villages like locusts. And their job was to requisition as much food as possible. And they would come back, you know, at all hours of the night to make sure you weren't hiding food. And this is what was so pernicious about it. Your own body would betray you. They could look at you and see that you're not losing weight. You've got those chubby cheeks. That means you have food. And that's the government's food. Uh, that is the food of the people. And if you are keeping food for yourself, you are stealing from the people. You're an enemy of the people and you deserve whatever comes to you. Uh, and it got to a point where they're eating, they didn't have grain to, to plant for the next harvest. Mm -hmm. um, and what was even sicker is, you know, one of the big criticisms of, of communists, of the czar, was his internal passport system that I can't go where I want within Russia, the Russian empire, without permission. During the Stalin imposed famine in the Soviet Ukraine for parents to cook and eat their children. He writes, quote, survival was a moral as well as a physical struggle. A woman doctor wrote to a friend in June, 1933, that she had not yet become a cannibal, but was not sure that I shall not be one by the time my letter reaches you, in quotes. The good people died first. Those who refused to steal or to prostitute themselves died. Those who gave food to others died. Those who refused to eat corpses died. Those who refused to kill their fellow man died. Parents who resisted cannibalism died before their children did. And there's stories in there about, um, yeah, cooking, cooking your children. Uh, the, the other thing about cannibalism, about famine in general, that stood out to me that unlike a lot of atrocities is uh, the people that are starving are exhausted. They're, they're basically unable to think. Merry Christmas.